Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Today we're going to do a paint with us and we're going to tackle one of the new Wolf's Dragoons Assault Star that uh, exclusive to Barnes & Noble and we're going to paint them up in the colors of the Black Widow Company. So you see I've painted my star up here and the one we're going to work on is this guy, the Mad Cat slash Timberwolf here. And the colors we're going to use uh, so we're going to prime them in Krylon High Heat Resistant Black. We're going to use some Games Workshop's Fiston Red and Bugman's Glow. Then we're going to use some Army Painter's Uniform Gray, Wolf Gray, Pure Red, Jungle Green, Moon Dust, Lava Orange, Matte White, and Matte Black. And we're also going to use uh, some Games Workshop Sterling Mud and Nuln Oil. So, really fun to paint up. So, these guys, I didn't scrape the mold line or clean. They're not that present, but you can see you can paint around them. So, there's actually a mold line here, but you don't notice it uh, with this paint technique. And we're just getting them tabletop ready. So, let's go ahead and get started. To start painting my Timberwolf, I primed them using Krylon's Heat Resistant Black Primer. This is something that's intended for barbecue grills, but it makes a nice shining coat, very durable, and I like the atomizer, and it's cheap and widely available. So the idea is I'm going to be inspired by the card art here. So we're going to paint up in the Black Widow Company colors. We're going to try to do some of these line edgings in red. Now you'd imagine that since we primed it black, we are mostly done. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uniform gray and I've got a little palette off to the side here and I'm going to spit some uniform gray in there and I'm going to dust up this object. Now mostly for this I'm going to use a medium layer brush from Games Workshop. But to start this process I'm going to dry brush but I'm not going to use a standard dry brush. This used to be a very fine point brush that frayed to pieces on me, so I cut most of the bristles back. And what that does is that makes a very tiny breath dry brush. So off camera, I have a piece of paper. So I'm going to dip, wipe some of the paint off, and get some of there. And then I am just going to, I want to move in a way that I catch the angles. And what you see is that it's not painting it gray. It's catching mostly on the edges. This is going to show that how it's not a deep, glossy black. It's reflecting some of the light there. And this will dull up the black a little bit. Give it a slightly used look. Oh, that's too much. Now you could probably use a regular dry brush for this. I just like having the fine control to pay attention to where I'm hitting with the brush. I'm mostly aiming for the edges. And the nice thing with the heat resistant, you can get it soon enough, it just wipes right off. That's another reason I like to um, put some other type of paint over the heat resistant. It makes the follow-on colors stick a little bit better. Alright, so you can see dusted my guy in uniform gray. So you see the edges pop out more. There's a little more contrast. Now we're going to move on to the red lining that you see in this card. Now, when doing straight uh, red lines, don't be intimidated because if we look at the art on the model here, you can see most of the red is actually confined to panels. So it's actually on the model where just paint that panel and you're done. Now the one tricky part will be by the canopy right here. That's going to be a straight line, so that's where we'll start. Now for red, when I do these videos I try to normally use like either all Army Paint or all P3. But honestly, the bed base red is Citadel's Mephiston Red. This is just really good at blocking out everything. 
so I always use it. So we'll sit here and say, okay, there's the tip of the canopy. We'll bring our line. Okay, so you can see this. We'll start here. There's a little indent in the model. And we're just going to practice going back, and we'll stop right there. So I have some paint in my palette. And move your model around your paintbrush, not your paintbrush around your model. And I picked out this medium layer because this is going to be the thickness of my lines. So I just want to glide it along. Nice smooth motion. Dip down. Moving straight, see how I kept my hand still? And moved the model around that because we practice just moving our brush in a straight line. Like that, we're just moving the hand and my hand stayed still. And we move there. And then there we go. It's that simple. Now, if you didn't get it ragged, because you see sometimes the left gets a little ragged, well, I have another grip, and we'll just line it like that. Nice smooth motion. Nice smooth motion. Put a little paint down here to connect the lines. This will probably be the trickiest bit that you do on the model. Okay, see? Got a nice clean line for that. And if we look at the rest of it, for example, you see there's a flat panel here. Just take the edge of the tip, just glide it right along. We're just going to do one coat here, and you'll see why later. So pick out as much red as you want. Now I have red everywhere I want it. I went ahead and t connected the racing stripe to the shoulder joint there. And don't worry about the canopy, we'll get that later. Um, but now we're going to take back to the uniform gray and I'm going to do barrels of his primary weapon system. And if you look at the card art and the box art, there's a little exit hatch here for the pilot. So we're just, and they have that shown as gray. We're just going to use the uniform gray and outline that. Nice little detail. We'll go ahead and make that visible for everybody. Let's see, I'll also do these barrel. Is that a barrel? I'll probably skip on the barrels. There, I'll just do these weapon systems. Oh, while I'm at it, they also show the missiles or the parader. So we'll just touch the tip of the brush to each one of the missile pods. So I dry brushed them and got them to stand out a little bit, but we want them to stand out a little more. Just touch the tip of the missile. There we go. So we've got our guy pretty much roughed out, and he is looking rough right now, but we'll get him looking better. But we're going to use some sterling mud here, and this is the point I'm going to texture the base. You can use an exacto blade, but I got Games Workshop's little paint applicator. I find this great for doing sterling mud. I don't need much. 
over here just trying to texture it and this is six millimeter scale so go ahead and put this on just put some nice little swirls in there so it's going to take some while, a while for the sterling mud to dry but the reason I put it on now is going to, so I'm going to put on a thick wash of Nuln oil and what this does is you know we've dusted it up with the uniform gray now this will bring some of the gray down that'll make sense so I'm going to take a brush that I messed up a long time ago and I'm just going to slop this everywhere and it will collect in some parts and run out of others which is what it's supposed to do Now once we put this on there, we are going to let this dry for a long time. You can use um, a hair dryer. That helps move this process along. But what I do is I normally paint these uh, all at once. So in between breaks, I'm actually painting my other members of the squad here. Or the, la sorry, Lance, Star, whatever. Should get underneath so you don't get any dry air bubble pockets here. But this will take a couple hours to dry. And this is, I'm doing this in the morning before I go to work. And then I will go about my day. And when I come back in the afternoon, all my little guys will be nice and dry and ready for the next step where we'll clean them up and make them look sharp. Now this is a good point to remind you that anytime you make a mistake, just get some matte black and touch it up. It won't make that big of a difference. But now, I call up to this point we've got it roughed in. Now let's do some of the detail work. So I'm going to get some wolf gray and I'm going to go my homemade extra tiny dry brush. And the same thing as before. We'd probably even want to dry it off even more and more just at this point actually aim for the edges see that gets into stand out because remember you're probably going to be several feet away from this model. That's a good point to think about how light is falling down so you imagine light will be coming down so this part of the plate probably won't get as touched by light as this part that's sticking out so we'll put a little bit more gray there. So this is the point you really decide how shiny you want to make your mech. So here I can just quickly move side to side and drag the brush down and highlights only the tops of the plates. That's an easy way to do it. So now the reason I like having the smaller dry brush is that I don't want to hit the red and the uniform gray. There's points we can touch it up, but the less touch ups the easier. But I want to move through this quickly so I can finish up rest of my lance, star, whatever. So just side to side, dragging it down. Or before with the gray, I uh, pretty much went in every direction here. I'll just drag it down. And same I try get the parts that I want highlighted more on there. More light on the top surfaces. Dry brush 
I mean, you can edge highlight all this, but that's going to take forever. And I'm not taking this to a show. I'm just trying to get this ready for the post-holiday gaming scene. Which I never participate in, but, you know, try to get ready for it. So let's go ahead and just go around, try brush this to taste. Now we're going to do the fun part, really set this model apart. So we're going to take some pure red. This actually goes pretty fast. Got it in my palette, load some on my thin layer brush, and I just run. So pure red's pretty runny, or at least whenever I get it in. So what I'll do is I'll just go over the parts that are in the fist in red, like this, just one stroke. And as I go around the model, the uh, pure red will dry. Nice smooth stroke right across that panel. Now what's going to happen is as it dries, it'll dull down. It'd be worse if it was all just pure red. And that would take a couple coats. The fisting really helps. But you can see that it'll pull on the plates and create some interesting light reflection. That's what we're going for. Make it look like we put a little more effort into it than what we did. But once it dries, see how this one, the first part I painted, is already drying and dulling down. What I'll do is I'll put a second coat, a thinner second coat on just that area. And that'll make it a little bit more red. And so we'll get some interest in it. It'll look like light is bouncing off of it. Now what you should do is if I highlight that panel, just put like, boop, boop, like that. I want to match it on the other side. So when you think about light hitting the top of your mech, make sure it's consistent across all the parts of the mech. Remember that straight line we did? We'll just run the brush right across. I don't want to hit it in the grooves. Gonna allow that shadow to keep existing. So we'll just go around and probably on the canopy I'll put an extra coat right here. But paint to taste. Now I'm gonna paint the base. So we're gonna to want to take this guy off. And for that, you can use anything you want. I use Bugman's Glow. Just because a long time ago, I decided to paint all my bases the same color. So they match. Okay. So for the top side, I'm going to use a slightly sharp brush, but one who's starting to die. I just want to start by carefully edging in around the feet. And then the rim. Use a bigger brush. I'm only going to do one coat now because it's best with Bugman's Glow. Just do one coat, let it dry completely, come back around. This happens with, even though it's a base one, Bugman seems to have a hard time covering up the Krylon Black. Make sure not to touch the model. Now I'm going to go back to Uniform Gray. We're going to do two things here. I've got it in my palette here, so I'm just going to put a little highlight here, make it look like light reflecting off parts of it. We're going to do that on barrels of the weapon. I 
should probably go halfway down the barrels. Alright, now for the other thing we're going to do is the canopy. Now for this we're going to have to be careful. We're going to use the tip of the brush and push towards the edge of the red. Don't want to touch the red. So work slow and carefully. I think the phrase that best goes here is don't be afraid to put the time needed into this part. This is the part you guys are going to be looking at the most. There's going to be some spots right here. Oop. And we're doing that for a reason, which I will explain next. So the point of using the uniform gray up here so now we can take some Army Painter Jungle Green. Got some in my palette. We're going to do the same thing. So doing this green over the black, touching up wherever we got red, wouldn't have been consistent. So we use the gray to rebase it. And then just put our bright, happy color over it. a little bit on the tip. Carefully. There we go. Tiny little canopy windows. Alright, so we'll go around and do the rest of these. Now I've got the canopy painted, but you know what? It doesn't look perfect, does it? So I'm going to do is take this pointy brush, and I am going to just, got to make sure the green's dry. I'm just going to put a little bit in here. So what that'll do is that'll darken the connection point between the green and the red in case I got a little too sloppy. There we go, so we're gonna let that dry. While we're at it, I'm gonna put some normal oil down here. All right, now is where it gets fun. So we're gonna take some Army Painter Moon Dust and this is our yellow, and what we're going to do is I'm going to just make little L's in the canopy. So down and over. A little bit sharper. It's supposed to be light. We're going to repeat that pattern over here.
Now I went back over the canopy with jungle green in the area in between the yellow and the green. That made a nice effect. Wish I got it on camera. My mistake. But you'll notice in doing the yellow and the green, we got some on the red of the canopy. But that's fine because we're going to do our final highlight. We're going to use lava orange. And this is going to be our opportunity to highlight the red on the canopy and the other areas and touch up. Those parts of the canopy I got hit as we were trying to paint the transparent armor. So this is just a light coat. So you can see what the orange does. So you lightly coat it over the pure red area. It makes the red stand out a little bit more. It's going to take a little while to touch this up. We're good now. Alright, so let's show you the example we're going to do over here. So we know we put some more red over here. So we'll touch that up with a little orange. Make it pop a little bit more. Just do the areas facing the light. And remember, we'll go around and flavor to taste. Now for the fun part. Uh, this is going to be our last step here. And we're going to take some Army Painter Matte White. And let's start with the canopy. So what I'm going to do is in the upper right corner of all these, just a little dot. Try to make them the same size dot. Then we'll get, dip it in the matte white, slide most of it out, and then we'll just go downstroke, 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 downstroke. Dip it in the white again, then we'll rotate the mini around our brush, down stroke, a little down stroke, and just for fun, diagonals, so we'll blend it together some, there we go, you got some light on the canopy, so I'll just turn that into a little reflection, using the side of the tip of the brush, Look at that. Canopy looks good. Now we're going to go around with the white. And here's what we're planning on doing with the armor. Take the side of the tip of the brush like we did with the canopy. And we'll just pick out little pieces. Like that. We know this side is going to get a little more light.
Don't want it everywhere. But the white on the black, especially if you can, I'm just hitting the edges, especially if you can make it look really smooth, actually makes it look like it's polished, shiny metal. sketching with a pen, pencil. So you saw with like the wolf gray, I hit like every panel from the top, I'm not doing that here. Just a couple spots. this allows us to do is show off some of the detail in the model. Now he looks shiny. I'll probably go around and take a couple of these missile pods, just touch tips of them. Ah, that was horrible. Get some of that white out of there. Oh man. Oh well. Alright, we go around and do that to taste. And so that is our guy there. Super shiny, super nice. So I'll probably go around and put some more white edge highlighting, but you get the idea. So great model. Go to your Barnes and Noble and get one if you're into Battletech. If you can find one. Cool. I just have fun doing this. Don't get carried away with the white. <laughs> Alright, well thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Lab. We'll see you next time.